on the same day of my nationals my exams were there i remember i wrote my exam my my dad took all the bike and the equipments in the car and he left to mumbai i wrote my exam same day from the college directly i went to the airport i remember one of my friend dropped me off to wait from where i can get a uh, airport bus from there i took airport bus uh went to airport flew down to mumbai again from there took a cab and went to the place where they were staying so i went reached in the late night at food and slept next day you know the itt was actually usually be the first event i think i did about five races there mm. out of which i could only finish one race mm. and that day i still remember at one point i my eyes were completely blank Hmm. I couldn't see anything. I'm riding. I couldn't see anything. For God's sake, the road was straight. So <laughs> I was not going and crashing into uh, someone. And uh, I took out two gels. I just squeezed both the gels together into my mouth. I put some water. Kept riding. Kept riding. And that was the race I finished. That was a really hard, like about close to two hours of riding. And that's when I understood, you know, when you go to such places. When only when you push your limits, that's when you want to improve. Yeah, that made me really curious about Belgium. And you know, any day if I get a chance to go out, I would be like the most happiest person to go out and race. Yeah, that. yeah. And I was the last guy to start. I started to catch up everybody. Hmm. And then I think two kilometers to go, I had a flat, my disc wheel flat. Hmm. I'm like, should I stop? I don't know what to do. Right? Should I stop? Should I restart the race? Just two kilometers left, or should I push through this? That's where uh, Kurni sir, not the younger one, the mm. elder Kurni sir, mm. was following me on his two wheeler. Mm. He's like, if you stop, they won't give you another chance. You have to keep going. Mm. Just two kilometers to go, push. Mm. I remember that was the most painful push that I've ever done in my life. Yeah. I had a flat. I'm pushing myself. Oh my god that was really painful and once i finished i was like okay gone uh, I, i might not even be in top 3 or top 4 uh, maybe i'd have i'd been i won't be able to race nationals hmm. that was the thought that i had in my mind but surprisingly i was first i am bike evenki and this is the working athlete podcast here i talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration training tips time management and lifestyle advice if this is something that interests you please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes today's guest is an under 23 karnataka state champion and is a silver medalist in under 23 road race at the 2020 nationals he has multiple medals at the nationals in under 23 and has a gold medal in under 18 as a part of karnataka team time trial cycling team in 2017 he manages his passion for sport along with his just for learning as he rode into multiple medals at nationals he also pursued an engineering degree in computer science and completed it with distinction as he continues to focus on cycling he is actively pursuing avenues of higher education and work opportunities in the area of cyber security i had the good fortune of playing a small part in his cycling journey as his first cycling coach it was a pleasure sitting down to chat about how he manages cycling while studying what his future plans are while also taking a ride down the memory lane of the last 4 5 years of his cycling progress let us dive into it welcome to the working athlete podcast gagan how are you good how are you good good so gagan uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, how was your uh, childhood in terms of sports It was pretty good when it comes to sports because I studied, I did all my schooling in Kendra Vidyalaya. So mm. this is a school where, you know, they give a lot of importance to sports. So right from the beginning, I was into sports, like pretty much all the sports, starting from Kabaddi, Kokpo, I used to play pretty much whatever sport is there in the school. I used to just go and just play. And the only reason to do that was 
Uh, I could uh, miss a lot of classes because of that. And I used to get free attendance for that. And that, that, I mean, that was one of the reasons. And also, I used to love sports a lot. So always I used to be, you know, outside in the ground, 24 into 7, after school, just come back home, go to the ground, be in the ground till 7, come back home, get scoldings from mom. So, yeah, I mean, that's how uh, I got uh, uh, interest in sports. And that's where I even started playing cricket. Once I was in the higher schools, I started playing cricket and I fell in love with it. And from there, I took forward. Uh, I went to a good good state uh, in terms of cricket. Then I the, the cricket itself changed into cycling slowly. Okay. So cricket uh, uh, from when to when? Around. So cricket uh, starting from my high school uh, is when I probably started playing uh, cricket. Sixth, seventh. Kind yeah, of. around yeah. sixth, seventh. And then slowly I uh, started to turn it into a little slight of professional way mm. uh, when I was in uh, probably 10th. Mm. Yeah, when I was in 9th, 10th, that's when I started to turn things in a little professional way. And then I think in 11th or 12th is when the transition started happening into cycling. Okay. So how uh, how did that transition happen? So the first person who introduced me to the biking was my brother. So mm. my brother got a MTB from Decathlon mm. and he used to just go out for rides. And I was like, okay, fine. Let me also get one just because he has got one. Yeah. And I got one. I said, commute to my college, which was Joseph's in Richmond town. Uh, no, not Richmond town, uh, uh, Brigade Road. Right. So I used to commute to my college every day. And one day, I, uh, I had an announcement in my college uh, saying, you know, hey, there's going to be a, a university district trials soon. Whoever is interested can come out and uh, give your names. So right. that's where I started to like, you know, getting into racing part. Okay. So how did those trails go? Your first race? So first race, they said it was going to be a race, but it wasn't a race actually. So we just went out to... Uh, Sheshadipuram College. Hmm. We were uh, about three to four of them from my college and three to four of them from Sheshadipuram College. And there exactly what happened was uh, the guy there wasn't interested in having a race because he had to go out to Hasanai. It was quite far for them. So they decided to just randomly select uh, just by talking to people. It's, it's more like an interview. <laughs> Uh, and then after an interview, a couple of them dropped listening to the way we are going to travel and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, finally, I was like, okay, fine. Let me just go in. Uh, just give it a shot. And I stuck to that. And I think three of us were, you know, finalized, basically. And we three of us uh, went to a state and that was a, a really bad experience. But yeah, it was a good start. Okay. What was that experience like uh, at the state? So we started, so I was expecting, you know, uh, things will be smooth, like we go out and we race. So I was very excited, but I knew I wouldn't be able to race on my MTB. So basically I had a, de a decathlon MTB. That's when I went to Wheel Sports, which was in Whitefield. Uh, Kiran was uh, responsible for that store. Mm. I went out to this store, uh, just on random uh, uh, note, somebody recommended that store to me. I just went out to that store and I was like, hey, do you guys have a, a bicycle which I can rent, a road bike? That's when Kiran was like, we don't, but I think we can give you something we can arrange. And then after a couple of days, they got back to me saying there's a bike which you can take it out for a rent. Uh, you can go out and, you know, race on it. I borrowed that bike, uh, did maybe like, you no know, one or two rides. Uh, took that bike in the train and uh, that journey was really bad because uh, I think the next day I had to live and today my gra grandfather expired. Oh, okay. So it was like I went to uh, my native uh, where my mom was already there. My dad got my bike in the train till my native because train had to go through uh, my native. And there, you know, I saw my grandfather and then again, I went to the train. My dad left my bike there and my dad came back to uh, wherever my grandfather's thing was going on. Right. From there, I took the train and went. Uh, yeah, it was like, you know, 
Mm, I could have skipped that. Yeah. But if at all I did, I wouldn't have been here like this, I think. Right. So you you went ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, my parents, I mean, I actually, uh, in fact, my parents thought if at all they tell me about my grandfather, I wouldn't go. Hmm. So they first asked me, what if, uh, I mean, I knew grandfather was in a critical state. So they asked me, what if your uh, grandfather passed away? Would you go or would you stay? This was the first question they asked me. And that's when I decided to get the uh, little bit of hint, you know, something has happened and then I was like okay uh, if, if they are uh, you know so much keen to send me through this I'm like okay fine I, I'll I'll go but mm. I was like okay let me uh, I have to see him at, at least once before I go right so that's when all this happened okay so and then you took the train to uh, get to where was this yeah. race so this was in a very small village I don't remember the name of the village but mm. it was somewhere in North Karnataka mm. Uh, I think somewhere around, uh, hmm, yeah, Babel Court or Bijapur itself, I guess. Okay. I don't remember exactly. Hmm. But yeah, that was like uh, a really bad stay. Hmm. And I mean, pretty much. Uh, you, you went there alone? No, hmm. uh, with a small group of people from Sheshali. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, so we went there and yeah, there was, there was I mean, it was like a place where it was basically a school classroom that was given to us for mm, stay. Right. And there, were, there weren't any washrooms and uh, no proper drinking water, nothing. Yeah. So that was my, like, you know, first experience going out uh, with somebody else. So, yeah, I was just like, you know, I thought, okay, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. And then the race started. It was only a road race. The race started and I, I was, like, clueless about drafting I was clueless about what uh, clip clip pedals are, clipless pedals are, nothing. I was on my basic sports shoes mm-hmm. on a rented bike. I just went out and there was a break. I never knew it was a break. I thought people are riding. So I just went with them. I think there were about seven of us in the front and the rest of them just got dropped after like, you know, uh, 20% of the race. And then I saw them drafting a car. So I was like, okay, I, I never knew what drafting is. So I was like, okay, fine. No, I mean, they're just going. There's no benefit. You have to ride. I was behind them. I was riding, riding, riding. And there was a slightly gap. And they just took off behind the car. And I, I was clueless because I, I never knew what drafting is. I kept riding alone uh, for the entire race. There was nobody behind me. There was nobody in front of me. I kept riding, riding, riding. And then finally I finished. I was seventh. And I was hmm. like, that was pretty impressive because... I never. I, I thought it wasn't, but uh, after coming back, whoever had travelled with me, either from Mysore or from um, Bangalore, nobody was even in top ten. Hmm. So everybody were like, you know, boosting me up, saying, "Hey, you did really good and stuff." And I was like, "Okay, fine. Uh, then I can do something in this." And that's when I decided to, you know, uh, uh, I mean, I, I rented the bike once again to when uh, I did go to Bijapur hostel there was a this selection trials in Bangalore that happened mm. I mean again there wasn't any riding that happened but during a selection mm. they called me to Kantirawa stadium and uh, they made me do some long jump high jump and stuff like that based on that uh, they selected and they were like you know you have to come to Bijapur, Bijapur for, for cycling they made you do long jump yes. and high jump and everything okay <laughs> and like 200 meters or maybe like 400 meters running also sprint yeah, yeah. okay and then I was like, okay, fine. I mean, I, I got, I took my cycle and went out, but uh, they never made me ride it. I was wearing my bib shorts and doing running there. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was very interesting part. Uh, and then I went out to Bijapur hostel for 10 days, uh, which was pretty decent. Uh, there uh, it was quite good. Hmm. But the only problem was I saw people... I know they never took exams there. Like paper, question paper used to come to the hostel. They used to open the textbook and write it. Still, they would fail. So that was the situation there. So I was like, if I am there, I am gonna, you know, drop my I do career and you know just concentrate on cycling. Which I, I, I was like, you know, not a big fan of doing that because. You know how situations are in India. Like until you get an Olympic medal, nobody is gonna care about. It. Right. So that's when I was like, okay, fine. My parents were pretty much okay with whatever uh, I chose to do. So mm. they just gave me an option. If you want to stay, you can. Mm. But uh, if you think you have to study and also do this, then, you know, better is come back to Bangalore. They, they were open to any choice. Mm. So I decided, you know, not to stay there. 
uh, and just you know i came back to bangalore and i thought fine let me keep cycling also i'll study as well with okay. that right so th- this was around what 2016 yeah 2016 right early 2016 early 2016 and the first time i noticed you was in uh, towards the end of 2016 yes uh in november 2016 i think and when someone uh, uh, actually asked who is this kid in the amateur uh, under 18 podium uh gagan reddy actually i think uh, it was uh, uh nj who messaged me asking uh, who is this kid uh, uh, gagan reddy on uh, under 18 podium because it is typical of nj because he keeps track of who is doing uh, how especially the younger lot i said i said uh, not sure but i think uh, i heard of him uh, through um, uh, you know kiran who called me uh, before that or after that i think so what happened was kiran called me and uh, he, uh, tasker uh, yeah yeah then uh, we uh, will sports branch and now the cycle station yeah. uh, he, uh, so he called me saying uh, uh, brother uh, there is this kid who is really interested in uh, cycling and uh, he uh, uh, he did well in uh, the nandi race mm-hmm. uh, so, so then i kind of put things together i think when uh, i remembered uh, uh, nj's message okay asking who is this kid and then he telling uh, you know uh, this kid did well at nandi race i was not uh, particularly sure it was the same guy at that time <laughs> and then uh, i said okay um, he 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 is very interested in uh, uh, cycling he wants to train well and do well Uh, at nationals is like 17 or say something like that so uh, i am giving uh, him your number so uh, he will contact you i said okay uh, you know i was also looking out for uh, a young talent to kind of support so i said uh, then i think you reached out to me and i said uh, okay let uh, you know let's meet at decathlon uh, mm-hmm. at uh, sunday 6:30 and you joined us for rides yeah. so that's how i kind of met you and then uh, eventually figured out okay it's the same guy who uh, <laughs> was in the top uh, uh, in under 18 uh, category at that uh, nandi race so what was that race like for you um that nandi race back in 2016 so as i told you after that university states um i came back to bangalore yeah coming back was also a heck of a thing mm-hmm. but after coming back uh i i was like everybody were like you know you're doing really good uh, why don't you practice a little bit and come out because i i had never trained like in my life like i just went out but i was in different sports so i had that uh, base fitness so i, I was able to ride and then after listening to everybody i was like fine uh, uh, why can't i just give it a try and that's when i again went out to kiran i was like do you have any of the bike for sale road bike i just mm-hmm. need a road bike if you have it let me know that's when there was this bmc um uh, mm, so it was like i think it was air foil yeah bmc air foil and then my parents were like okay fine i i knew, i mean that time it was quite expensive right because i never knew what cycling is and how expensive things are uh, but yeah it is much it more was, than the decathlon bike yeah, you yeah, want to <laughs> i think it was about uh, i paid about 50k for that bike i guess i mean that was like a lot because i i never got a bike that expensive before i never seen such a expensive bike before right my parents agreed and i got the bike i started riding i started training and uh, somebody suggested me to use the uh, uh, what is that clipless pedals mm. cleats mm. that's something that uh, introduced me to cleats first i was like okay fine this is very interesting cleats uh, and i went to wheel sports again because that's the only store i knew or i can rely on i was like i need these uh, shoes and you know pedals and they told me the cost i was like okay this is quite expensive again 
And then I was like, okay, fine. Um, I I was like, do you have something cheaper? And then they suggested me to get pedals from Decathlon and shoes from them and cleats from again from Decathlon. That way it would have been cheaper. I was thinking over it. And then I think it was a week ago, uh, BBCH, uh, Nandi Race. Big before yeah. BBCH, yeah. And then uh, Kiran also suggested me to do the race. He was like, you know, just go out and do this race. I registered and it was like, I think, yeah, one week was left out for the race. That's when I uh, saw the post somewhere on Facebook. Uh, this was basically Sunil and Japa's post, which said he's selling his pedals. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, fine. And he was selling it for a really cheaper price. Uh, used one. So mm-hmm. I went out and got those pedals, put it onto my bike, got the shoes and got the cleats from Decathlon. Uh, I started training on them. I just did two, three rides and I went out for the race. It felt good on the flat. Uh, I was like, you know, that, by then I knew what drafting is, uh, how exactly cycling works, at least, you know, the initial part of it. Yeah. I went out, I started racing. I mean, I was uh, I was like, okay, fine, there are a lot of people around me. I was never, uh, I never ridden in such a big bunch before, but I was very comfortable with the first shot itself. I kept riding and I think when the climb started, uh, we were left out with about uh, 10 people, a mature and uh, under 18. I started riding uh, uphill, I think after uh, first uh, four or five kilometers, um, we started to split up, things started to split up slightly. And I was like, okay, fine. I, I felt like, you know, I still have a lot of energy in me. I started to sprint right from there. And by the time I was like a kilometer or a two kilometer uh, before the finish line, I was completely dead. Out, yeah. My dad was behind me on a two wheeler. Uh, he's like, I keep going because there's nobody behind you. Like at least two uh, airplane bends, there's nobody behind you. I'm like, no, it's not happening. I'm I'm dropping off because my uh, first time I was wearing the cleats. That started to give me a lot of trouble. Yeah. At one point, I was like, you know, just take out the cleats, just throw it, and just ride barefoot. I was like, okay, fine. Uh, um, I kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And then after I finished, uh, I was like, that was a hell of a ride. Right. You really were completely painful. dead. Yeah, really painful and such an exhaustion I had never gone through before. Right. I was like, okay, fine. Uh, I'm done with this race now. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's when I got to know uh, I was on the podium because... I think one amateur guy finished in front of me. Uh, I don't know who the guy was. Hmm. So I thought, I think it was Tarun. Okay. Uh, so I, I thought he was also in under 18, but later I got to know he was an amateur. I was first and, and that, that made me really happy because after suffering so much, I got the result. Right. And that was my first proper racing and I was on the podium. Right. So that, that made me like, you know, very curious about the whole cycling thing. And what I can do more into it. That's when I just uh, contacted you after that. Right, right. Yeah, so after right after the race, uh, I, I think Kiran uh, called me saying, I gave uh, this kid your number. Uh, and you you called me right after and we kind of I told you to uh, so my my thing is so uh, you know whoever uh, reaches out we'll meet only on the ride yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is no point interviewing uh, you yeah. know uh, off the bike <laughs> so interview is always on the bike on the road if you are able to keep up, you are doing good. <laughs> if you are not, you are not. So th- that's when you, uh, I kind of noticed that um, uh, you were able to kind of uh, keep up, uh, not just with me, but um, I heard from uh, Craig, uh, our uh, other monster on the <laughs> road. Uh, that uh, this kid is doing good he i was like really putting the hammer down and he was keeping up uh, you know on the way back mm-hmm. when every, uh, everyone else was uh, uh, you know dropped i said okay that sounds good 
let's uh, let's see how uh, this goes and then we rode more and more together yeah. and uh, in 2017 start jan is when we said okay uh, let's do something uh, for these you know young kids now a spectrum being a bunch of oldies uh, is uh, predominantly an old team yeah. so that's when uh, um, i thought okay let us uh, uh, take you under bv coaching and then uh, also under spectrum um, because alone i can only do so much uh, but as a team uh, you know everyone if you are part of a team everyone it will kind of come together to uh, you know help so that's when the idea of spectrum development team came about with you and uh, you you were the only part of uh, that spectrum development team initially and uh, i think that kind of uh, uh, it was a start in in terms of the development from there how was 2017 for you it's pretty good i still remember uh, you were like you know come out for this ride on saturday nandi yeah. ride yeah. Uh, doctor was also joining it was only three of us yeah we went out for a ride uh, i was doing a lot of work way out uh, and then we did the climb and when i was descending down you guys were standing there uh, and like you know we stood there and a doctor was like do you want to join uh, spectrum I was like okay fine uh i don't mind uh i mean i'm lucky to join your attack in fact then uh, yeah that's where uh I, I started to talk to doc for the first time and then we descended down i remember the whole ride actually like way back i was completely dead i went out and i asked her energy bar uh doc was like okay take it <laughs> i remember the ride like a whole ride itself right in front of me yeah uh yeah that's how it started i mean it was very interesting because just for the first time, you know, uh, something really good was happening, according to me. Uh, like, from nowhere, I started cycling. And, you know, within no time, I was into a, a team. Right. Uh, and then, I think, I still remember this race, after which, uh, uh, um, which was this race, BBCH Crit. Hmm. So, this race, I was very curious this was after the Chiclo camp. Hmm. Uh, Chiclo had a small camp uh, somewhere outside. Right. Uh, so I remember uh, I went out to that camp. Uh, and soon after that was the race. I was racing and I had a fall. I broke my bike. It was a bad crash. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, the bike is broken. I paid 50k for this. <laughs> and I, like, oh, I mean, I... I I never thought of what is going to happen next because I don't have a bike. And I think after a couple of months was nationals. Right. And we were training for that. Yes. Okay. And I was like, kind of sad because yeah, two months nationals and I don't have a bike. Uh, that's when I remember you coming out to me and saying, hey, don't worry. We have a bike for you. Yeah. Like, okay, fine. I was like, that's when I was like, fine. I have a bike to race my nationals then. Right. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I think... Um, uh, Ravi Ranjan. Yeah, Ravi. So we immediately when we uh, when uh, we uh, you know I was at the race uh, watching and we, immediately when I knew that uh, you, when I heard that you crashed, we ran to the uh, place where you crashed, and <laughs> it was uh, you know you were you were almost uh, you know all scratched up everything, but you were more worried about your <laughs> bike than <laughs> than whatever blood you were uh, you know. Uh, coming out uh, but i said okay don't worry about the bike we'll figure something out was one, you know what i told but immediately when i kind of reached out to the team and uh, told okay this, this guy you know broke his bike it's completely out i said uh, raviranjan immediately said uh, hey i have this uh, ridley so gagan can have it uh, no problem as like see that's that's the uh, beauty of having a True. team it's like a family right uh, you stand up for your family and take care of them when they need it and uh, that's why 
I wanted you to be part of the team just because being a lone wolf is something else and being a, t- a part of a team is something else. And, uh, you know, the team chipped in and uh, make, made sure that you had the equipment uh, for the nationals, you know, for train continuing to train for the nationals in uh, 2017. And that year itself was beautiful in terms of, you know, it was the first, uh, first year, first nationals, and it was a lot of uh, new things. Mm. Uh, navigating, uh, you know, BPCH is pretty straightforward. Yes. You, re- you register, <laughs> you show oh, up, yes. and you race. Yes. Uh, you know, but state level uh, state uh, championship selection district uh, championship sure. selections state championship selections and then turning up at nationals mm-hmm. it's a lot of navigating yeah. so how was that experience for you what what kind of navigation you had to do until you kind of made it to the national yeah i mean that was a heck of a ride um so first was my states mm-hmm. uh, i went out for the states and my dad accompanied me. Hmm. I went out for the States for the first time. I was like, okay, fine. States is going to be something much, much bigger. And, you know, things are going to be really different. I went out two days uh, prior to the date of the race. I went out to check out the course. I did some intervals there. Hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, I came back to the hotel. The only thing I had in my mind was uh, pacing myself well. Because I, I remember you mentioning, you know, uh, just pace it well and you will win it right. I paced it really well that day uh, I did really good it was very hot um, and yeah Bijapur uh, it was quite hot it was in summer I guess uh, it's always summer in Bijapur <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah Yeah, and then that race was quite interesting because I remember I was doing my best and I think I was fourth there um uh, and i was selected for uh, nationals mm. and this being the nationals being in karnataka itself they asked me to come out and stay in bijapur for one month mm. and i was doing my engineering by this time and yeah. it was my first first year in my engineering college right i was like one month i don't think my college is going to give me the permission for this i was like okay fine uh, i will have to uh, either skip my nationals mm. or you know just just miss one semester of my college itself mm. for one month and then you know retake the exams later I was like I was I was very confused at that point of time I went back home I I sat down I was like okay fine uh, I have to go and try at least I remember one whole month I was running between principal's chamber to the staff room to my sports uh, department, everywhere, I'm like, you know, I need one month permission. I need one month attendance, you know, rest I'll manage. I don't want marks. I just want attendance. Rest I'll manage, how, how, whatever possible. And then I went out to principal. I spoke to him. He was like, we can't give you attendance. Uh, or on regarding to sports, we can give you 10% of the attendance. Okay. But 10% is not going to help me. It's like two or three days. Three days, yeah. <laughs> like it's not gonna happen like i need one month whole month and um principal was like sorry we can't help you Mm. and if i was like if principal is telling this i don't think anybody would be able to help me in the college i went out to like you know individual teachers each and every teacher i told them this i they were like okay we'll uh, fine a few were like we'll give you attendance couple of them were like no we can't and then I took my uh, uh, sports director with me. He spoke to a couple of them. They agreed. So all this was happening for almost a month. Uh-huh. And I had to miss my classes to do this as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, that was a really tough time. Mm. But somehow I managed uh, to get a month off. Mm. And I still remember I was writing my exam on, on the day of leaving. Mm. I had an exam, uh, uh, internals. I was mm. writing that. My dad was waiting outside uh, the college. Yeah. As soon as I finished, I went, uh, got into the car, went out for uh, one month of training at uh, Bijapur. Yeah. And there, it was really tough to stay at the place where they had given. Mm. I went out and I saw it was just a 
hall hmm. with one washroom hmm. and there are about 25 30 people in the hall right and i'm like if i stay here i won't be able to study because i have to study as well right uh, because soon after i get back from my college i had my exams hmm. i'm like i have to study and also train and if i stay here i don't think it's happening and there was nothing it's just a empty hall hmm. they put some plastic sheets on the ground they hmm. like stay here yeah i'm like this is impossible to stay here yeah like you know i can stay if i'm not studying but in such a big crowd if i stay i don't think i'll be able to study i don't think i'll be even able to you know open, open the my books. book yeah that when my dad was like it's okay let's look for something else and we started to contact people uh, all those uh, state association guys just to ask if they have any house for rent somewhere and they're like you know mm, leave him there for today within two days we'll arrange uh, some place like you know we'll rent out some place hmm. for this guy but my dad was like you know he was like he was a little skeptical because uh, when they tell that uh, i mean we can't rely on them right so my dad was like it's okay if we start little late uh, but you know we'll figure out a place for you and then leave so we started to look out for uh, a rented house renting house and nobody was ready to rent it out for a month they're mm-hmm. like you know you have to stay for at least a year right. uh, we we won't find tenant after that yeah. so they're like okay fine uh, there's no other option i kept looking for a, for a, i mean we were we reached in the morning till evening we were just looking out for places yeah and finally we found a hotel mm. a hotel room where they agreed to you know rent it out for a month right uh, and my dad was like okay fine uh, this is the only option that we have right now mm. you can stay here but the only problem was i was not able to cook hmm. i had to go out and eat for every single time right um, which wasn't that healthy hmm. uh, before nationals but right. i had no other option yeah. i had to do it i stayed there for a month oh that training was like you know though i wasn't training it was tough yeah i had to go out in the morning i had to go out in the evening again so that was little hectic yeah uh i don't know what exactly was happening it was more like a uh, you know just go all out every single day yeah morning you go all out till then we kind of uh, you know worked on lot of intervals <laughs> and everything and then the camp was like no okay intervals. <laughs> no intervals no easy days <laughs> everything was smashing i remember we talking about that and said like you know see if we can kind of manage some easy days in between sure. <laughs> because you will be dead uh, if you go all out every day uh, but you know once you are there you can't basically do your own training plan at least not uh, not if uh, you know maybe if you can uh, you can do if you are an nj or someone else <laughs> but not when you are under 18 yeah. so, so, uh, someone no one knew yeah. right so you had to go with the flow um so yeah continue yeah, so th- i mean that was very interesting and it was very painful also right. because i had to go all out every single day in the morning and then again evening i had to ride out now they used to make us ride little easier at least right and this easy was like you have to be on your small ring you mm. can even if it's a downhill you can't put it on a bigger chain ring you have to be on your small ring right and there used to be a guy on a motorcycle with a stick uh <laughs> so that was something i was seeing it for the first time <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very interesting that part was really interesting it was a good experience for me yeah. and the other good experience there was they did another trials mm. uh, we already had a state trials mm. and after going there uh, they were like you know we have another trials i think like, okay fine i went out uh, by this time i think uh, sarvesh was there mm. uh, in the same hotel where i was staying mm. navin raj was also there i borrowed one um, one of the disc wheel from sarvesh hmm i was like okay fine uh, i have a disc wheel now i can do much better than what i did in uh, the state trials previously done right i went out for this state trials and very interestingly i was like you know really confident uh, about myself i went out I, i was never thinking about anything and i was the last guy to start i started to catch up everybody hmm and then i finished i mean no there was a kilometer to go I don't know, I think 2 kilometers to go I had a flat my disc wheel flat hmm. and I'm like should I stop I don't know what to do right should I stop should I restart the race just 2 kilometers left or should I push through this that's where uh 
Kurni sir, not the younger one, the mm. elder Kurni sir, mm. was following me on his two wheeler. Mm. He's like, if you stop, they won't give you another chance. You have to keep going. Mm. Just two kilometers to go push. Mm. I remember that was the most painful push that I've ever done in my life. Yeah. I had a flat. I'm pushing myself. Oh my god, that was really painful. And once I finished, I was like, okay, gone. Uh, I, I might not even be in top three or top four. Uh, maybe I'd have, I'd been, I won't be able to race nationals. Mm. That was the thought that I had in my mind. But surprisingly, I was first. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is interesting. I was first. Uh, and I was like, okay, fine. Then I can do something at nationals. That's when I got the confidence. And after two days, they call out and they're like, we have another trials. Can you please come out uh, tomorrow? Right. Okay, I fine. remember that. Yeah. I have to go out. No other option. And this time I go. So, and like, you know, I did the same uh, timing, whatever I did two days back. In fact, a little better. But surprisingly, I was third. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, maybe today my legs are not good. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, it's done. Uh, and uh, after two days, they call out for one more trial. Right. Be like... I was like already pissed off. I mean, they were trying to push me out of the team is what the thought that came into my mind. Right. I was like, uh, no, I can't come for this. I'm, I'm done with like three trials and you have pushed me already to third. I don't want to come out and do it once again. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, no, you have to come. I know you will win. You are very strong. <laughs> you, have, you just have to come out and race. You will win easily. We know. We have confidence. I was like, not happening. I won't do it. At any cost. I'm done. I called uh, Kurni sir directly. I told him, these guys are calling me for one more trials just to push out, push me out of TTT. Mm. I was like, I can't do that. I'm not going for one more trial. We are already done with like three trials and nationals are what? Like a week uh, in a week. And then you want me to do another trials now. Then the, the Kurni sir was like, no, no, we are not doing any trials. Uh, whoever tells you to, I'll take care of that. And then, okay, fine. That was done. Uh, I, I was like, okay, fine. At least I'm, I'll be able to do TTT, but I was very much uh, keen to doing the ITT as well. Yeah. But unfortunately only top two will be doing ITT. So mm. me being third in the final trials, I wasn't allowed to do the ITT. Mm. TTT day. Yeah. So my parents also came in. You, you were also there yeah. uh, for the national day. The TTT started. I told the guys, see, we don't have to go really hard in the beginning because I remember you telling me all this. Yeah. I was trying to tell the same thing to them. By then, I had a little bit of uh, experience uh, regarding that. So, I was telling them, you know, we're not supposed to go really hard because people there were like really wild, I could say. Hmm. Right at the start point, they'll just start sprinting and they'll die after half the way and yeah. they'll start suffering. They agreed. They agreed saying, you know, yeah, we'll take it a little easy in the beginning and then slowly build up to a pace. Right at the start point, they started sprinting. Yeah. Like we're doing 55, 60 KPH for the first five kilometers. They're just hammering, hammering, hammering. And then they all die. Yeah. And it's like they started to reduce the pace. And they're taking 10, 10 seconds, 5, 5 seconds pull. They're just coming back and sitting. Then I started taking longer pulls. And that was the toughest ride of my life, I could say. I remember my average heart rate was 195. Yeah. for the 40 kilometers right. I was completely dead because for the next 20 kilometers I was the only one taking longer turns pulling out them and then we end up with the last 10 kilometers where I was just not able to hold on to the wheels itself I was completely exhausted I just somehow kept sitting for the last 10 kilometers by then they were recovered a little mm. bit so they started working Yeah, and yeah we ended up uh, finishing on top yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, that was a beautiful day. That yeah. was a beautiful day. I remember, uh, you know, being there, uh, watching and then kind of trying to time, uh, you know, um, the Rajasthan boys and uh, the Punjab boys and uh, um, I think Haryana. Haryana, I guess, were the other two strong guys. True. And uh, we were, uh, dad was there and, uh, you know, I was there timing and trying to see who, you know, the gaps. Yeah. 
and with every kind of lap we were getting more and more hopeful and mm-hmm. we could clearly see the uh, you know gap mm-hmm. building and you guys moving to the first place and all like really really excited and i saw you really dead by the end yeah. it was beautiful um, you know by the time uh, we were sure by the time we ended but mm-hmm. then the official results we had to wait and um, it was an amazing moment uh, you know be uh, the, your first nationals and coming out on top uh, in the ttt with the gold with the boys was just amazing yeah, i was um, uh, you, 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 your dad and i were like super proud and joyous at that time so yeah that, you know but uh, you know, this was as i said uh, it, it was navigating a lot yeah. uh, trying to get the studies in uh, we are trying to spend time one month away uh, from college but still trying to study going through a lot of uh, hoops multiple trials uh, pushed out, you I, know i remember a very interesting thing was when yeah. i was there at uh, bijapur i had to submit one of my assignment so i texted my teacher saying i am outside from my nationals so i won't be able to submit the assignment he is like then we'll deduct your marks that's it simple <laughs> so like, okay i was like i'll write and scan it and send it to you he's like no no i need a hard copy wow then i told told my friends i remember all my friends sat each one wrote one one sheet of page <laughs> they put it everything together and they submitted it So, yeah i mean that was a really funny thing yeah yeah so that you know the all the all the pain i guess was worth it when you kind of see um, that you understand uh, on that podium yeah. uh, with the gold medal I, you know with the rest of the team it was really really good yeah that being my first nationals and first podium it it really boosted me up i mean that's something that you know kept going yeah yeah it was as a coach it was kind of uh, everything was new for me as well because um the navigating that scene yeah. along with you right the state national yeah. <laughs> state selections and the nationals and the pre trials yeah. and everything i you know trying to understand all the politics that mm. are, that go on it was it was quite interesting mm. uh, you know uh, getting to hear from you and then reflecting on that <laughs> and stuff like that very very interesting times and then in 2018 right yeah uh, before we go to 2018 talking of managing studies and uh, uh, riding and everything the one important uh, you know thing that we kind of uh date was i think the decision to move closer to uh college, college. Yeah. while because to aid you your parents are in uh, are we what is it yeah. uh, bml bml the your parents are in bml your college is in out uh, uh, mysore road mysore road it is like 20 kilometers yeah about 25 uh, kilometers uh, 25 yeah. kilometers we immediately figured out that commute is not going to happen impossible, impossible to get training in mm. and then go to college and study and come back and recover all that is going to take a hit so and beautiful the beautiful thing about the cycling community in bangalore and our guys are amazing yeah. is that rajnikanth it is such such an awesome dude he offered a room in his uh, house uh, nothing you know no rent nothing you come and stay with me and that was such a blessing right because it was his house was so close to the college and uh, that try that side roads are very good to ride uh, and that i think that thing was really really important oh, yeah. and rajneep khan played a big role in yeah. that you know we would have um maybe found a room somewhere outside and you know because that thought was already there we talked about it but you know staying with a cyclist 
who knows uh, what it takes is something else right and having that kind of support yeah. with him it was fantastic and uh, uh, i i just wanted to acknowledge that fact because rajni uh, was r- super awesome there with his support uh, yeah, yeah definitely i mean i remember i went out for a ride uh, so we wanted a little bit of water before we start back to ride through the city to house I think I had a couple of people with me I don't remember who exactly I went to Rajni's place he showed me this room he's like if you want to move in any time you can move in here uh, this was actually I was planning to make it a gym room but now I'm not using it whenever you want you can come stay right this side and go or if you want to stay here your college is very close you can stay it's like okay that we are already talking about you know moving towards Correct. that uh, and I was like okay I went back home I messaged him saying, "Hey, I'll I'll move in." He's like, "I'm happy, move in." I'm like, uh, "I would be really happy to have you here." I was like, "Okay, fine." Uh, I moved out. I told my parents, "I can't uh, train here. If I move there, I'll be able to train and also uh, study uh, simultaneously." I moved out to Rajni's place. It was really interesting because we were more like a family there. It wasn't like a tenant. Yeah, of because course. Because Rajni used to come out uh, with his food every <laughs> every time while he was having his dinner. He used to come out with his food to my place. <laughs> we used to sit there, talk about cycling, have food, and yeah, I mean, I was never, I never felt I was out of my house. Yeah, it was like I have that uh, uh, really good bonding uh, with uh, Rajni there. I mean, he used to come for, I mean, pretty much every night. Yeah. He used to have dinner uh, at my place. He used yeah. to uh, get his uh, dinner. He used to stay in like third floor. I was staying in the ground floor. He used to come all the way down. He used to sit, talk, have food, and whenever uh, his wife Emma uh, used to cook really uh, tasty food, uh, I used to go out and eat uh, those. It was more like a you know, it was like yeah, a family. It's the family there. Yeah. yeah. I had like I never felt I was away from the how my house. Uh, yeah, I mean that was something that you know really changed a lot of things in my life. I knew how to, um, you know. go out of the house and still feel you know there's a family yeah um uh, i never thought you know somebody can be that uh, you know get close to me that easily yeah but i mean yeah it was very interesting even that part and that also made a really big difference in my training hmm. i was able to train well in the morning and then go to college and that that place being so close i still remember there were times where i went out to college i was completely dead i wasn't able to sit in in the college I was like, you know, come back to my room, sleep for a couple of hours, <laughs> then go back to college again to attend the last few hours of the college. So yeah, that that's something that really helped me staying there. Yeah. And Rajni Khan being an awesome guy, I was never bored at all. <laughs> He has uh, amazing stories so, to tell every day, yeah. almost. He's an uh, awesome dude, awesome dude. It's yeah, it is great to kind of um, you know, it's great to uh, you know having. uh you know ha- having the facility and then uh, taking that pain to kind of offer something mm-hmm. and then go 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 through with it and uh, continuing to support you like that for uh, what 3 4 years huh? mm-hmm. yeah was so, is really awesome and also is like twice the age of mine yeah. but we still were thinking it properly <laughs> yeah yeah he he is he is yeah. super awesome and then uh, 2018 is uh, was pretty interesting right mm-hmm. that was the year that you went uh, out to belgium yeah. to uh, you know get some exposure there how was how was that uh, experience for you that was very interesting because soon after my nationals uh, i think i started to talk to nj Mm. because that's when you know uh, chiklo invited me to their team right yeah uh, we went i mean uh, i remember we went out to one of the navin john's talk in yeah. chiklo cafe correct correct that's where i spoke to ashish for the first time and he was he was like you know a really nice guy uh, even bachi mm. uh, they all they were all supporting chiklo uh, yeah and yeah that's where i joined chiklo and i started to talk to nj a little bit uh, slowly um, and it was very interesting because i was talking to somebody who is you know basically a god of indian cycling i could say yeah uh, uh, like you know the top in india 
yeah so it was very i was very curious to talk and you know at the same time i was also nervous in the beginning what yeah. to talk what yeah. not to talk yeah. uh but yeah uh, that that journey was really good because i got out to go to belgium and train for a month which was a really big uh, difference that put into me because mm. training in belgium is something else right you get to know what true cycling is there uh what we do here i could say it's nothing mm. like uh, I, I could I mean, I, we can't even compare what we do here and what happens there right. like every day you have races um so yeah when we went out there i think i got to travel with shrinath uh, me and shrinath were traveling and uh, just because i had shrinath with me i never felt uh, lonely or something like that going outside because he this guy is like super funny we kept talking there was a lot of fun that was happening in the journey <laughs> yeah. so we, we really had fun going out and staying there uh we met a couple of uh, Aussie guys and one guy was from New Zealand right so these guys were like always uh, you know uh, doing some nonsense stuff in the house yeah. they were kind of scared we should lock up the door and keep be inside uh no that uh, that journey was like you know really interesting because i got to know what outside world looks like what uh, what what cycling outside india looks like basically so I remember the first race that I went out NJ was like this also this particular race was also my uh, first race when mm. he when he was there 3 years back mm. um in 2018 3 years back so that was very made me very curious to finish the race I was like okay fine I have to do this I was like I am going to give out everything that I have we started the race right at the beginning I'm sprinting at as if it's a finish line. <laughs> that was like I'm like why the why the hell am I riding so hard right in the beginning just to stay on the wheels. I kept going. I think I lasted for like 25 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I came back and I was looking at my power data. I'm like okay, 300 310 NP. Like <laughs> okay. I've never I've never seen such numbers in India. Yeah. Like even after training so much I've never seen such numbers. and i remember nj mentioning there used to be one race uh, which is called as shelda f1 nj was like if you can finish that then you will be able to survive you know races at a good time hmm. so even before i did that race he asked me to do this one f1 i was feeling really strong on that race i think it was just an hour uh, 300 np uh, i was feeling really strong i went out for the race with the same mindset then i understood you know this is not shelda f1 this is something else <laughs> uh i lasted for only 25 30 minutes and nj was like that's really good time because when he was there for the first time you and he lasted for similar uh, amount of time so i was like okay if it is good then good, good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't have to you know be sad about that yeah i d- i think i did about five races there mm. out of which i could only finish one race mm. and that day i still remember at one point i my eyes were completely blank Hmm. I couldn't see anything I'm riding I couldn't see anything for god's sake the road was straight so <laughs> I was not going and crashing into uh, someone and uh, I took out two gels I just squeezed both the gels together into my mouth I put some water kept riding kept riding and that was the race I finished that was a really hard like about close to 2 hours of riding and that's when I understood you know when you go to such places when only when you push your limits that's when you want to improve yeah that made me really curious about belgium and you know any day if i get a chance to go out i would be like the most happiest person to go out and race yeah, there yeah yeah it's it's amazing right so that, i remember the you know the time when um, nj reached out to me you were um, uh, i i was coaching you and also srina at that point of time i think and uh, he reached out to me saying uh, uh dude um, i'm looking i'm thinking of gavin ferciclo uh, you can continue to coach him I, uh, but uh, i think he will benefit from this kind of uh, you know thing what do you think and i said oh, oh amazing of course so that, that's when we kind of agreed that you will be part of uh, chiclo and then uh, you know and srinath as well and then uh, 
we kind of had a couple of calls nj and i where we decided okay what's kind of uh, what would be the kind of uh, training that will be uh, needed going into that going into uh, belgium and then uh, as uh, we agreed that in belgium he will take care of the uh training pl uh, plan and uh then we once we come back then then we kind of touch base again and see how things uh you know need to be planned so uh we had i i kind of had that plan for you until then and then so that you will be yeah. in a decent shape to get there and then he took care of the staff uh, there he is an amazing uh, yeah. you know guy uh, very transparent in the way he deals yeah. um it doesn't matter who is coaching and you know he he puts the uh, development of the rider in the first yeah. place that that's that's the great thing about uh, him so and then the experience of the uh, you know belgium there i remember uh, you know chatting with you about uh, your races how uh, how how long did you last yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all that it's it's yeah. you know until you get there and get the, that kind of exposure you won't be able to understand yeah. what it really takes right that's the great thing about the um, um, the program that he started with taking people there you know uh, he himself went and spent a few years there to kind of get that idea mm -hmm. and started taking people yeah. there and uh, putting them through the rigor right uh, he uh, i remember him saying uh, it is very tricky to kind of take people there because once they are there they either uh, come back stronger both physically and mentally or it will completely break them down and they won't be they will almost give up yes. cycling so <laughs> great that you both you and srinath came back stronger and uh, both physically and mentally and continue to ride the uh, yeah, i mean one month uh, for the first time i was saying uh, staying somewhere else where you know there were only one indian around me yeah it was something that was really tough towards the end of the month like and also i crashed towards the end of the month mm. i think a couple of days uh, for our flight mm. i crashed and i broke my hand mm. that was a really nasty fall yeah. and it was really tough to navigate myself i remember ng was also there in that race i crashed just because a girl hopped on in front of me and i crashed into her i fell and i wasn't able to uh, you know start restart the race again so they made me uh, they picked me up they put me into a cafe um i was sitting there they offered me some uh, drinks and stuff uh, uh and i washed my wounds everything was fine i was able to move my hands i was able to move my legs everything was fine but i had a, a really bad pain on my left hand but i was like you know i'm, I'm able to move there's no fracture and i was sitting there NJ had a really bad flat because he had a pothole or something like mm. not pothole i mean belgium you can't find yeah. potholes of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was something else that he hit and uh, he had a really bad flat like the tire was cut or something like that uh, he he came back to the same cafe and he's like oh you also got dropped he's like yeah yeah long yeah. back i had a fall so he's like oh okay fine he's like yeah i'm also done now i won't be able to start again so let's sleep there's no point of staying here i get up i'm not able to move my hand Yeah. Like NJ, I'm not able to move my hand. He's like, really? What happened? Then he comes and he tries to look into it. I had a little bit of swelling and like, okay. Then we'll have to go to the medical camp, which is there. So we went to the medical camp. They gave us some ice pack, and I was sitting there. They called up an ambulance. They're like, you know, it might be a fracture. We'll have to get a X-ray done. They called an ambulance. NJ is like, ambulance. Okay. This is looking something really bad now. because you know navigating i mean it was the race uh, thing was quite far from mm. where we were leaving the hospital was on the other end as well yeah nj was like don't worry about your bike i'll get you uh, i'll get your bike to my place and mm. later you can come and take it mm. uh, so nj managed to pull someone there uh, put his uh, my bike into his car and send it to his place and i went out to the ambulance to the hospital they took me in 
I mean, they never asked anything. Just took me in. They did X-rays and stuff like that. They just took my address and name. They did everything, whatever possible. I was, I was waiting in the waiting room to meet the doctor. NJ comes in. Uh, he has ridden the race. Then he has ridden to the hospital. I think hospital was about 30-40 kilometers, I guess. I don't remember exactly. But around 30 kilometers. He rode again to the hospital. He came there and he's like, Are you okay? He's like, I don't know, but I'm not able to move my hand. I went out to the uh, doctor then. I met doctor. Doctor was like, uh, there's a light air crack, so we'll have to put a plaster. They just cut open my jersey and they I put a cast. And I was like, okay, how do I go back home now? And she was like, caps are going to be very expensive. So he was like, let's do one thing. You wait here near the hospital. I'll go. Get the train ticket. Find out what time the trains are. And I'll get you a train ticket and give it to you. You can catch a bus from here. And again a train. And when you get out of the train there, I'll arrange a cab from there to your place. That, yeah. That'll be okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, fine. And I, I, I told you my jersey was cut open. Right. I was wearing a hospital gown. Because uh-huh. that was the only option I had. Instead of going... In. So NJ was like... Do you want to go naked or do you want to go with the hospital with the gown? Hospital gown. <laughs> I'm like, hospital gown would be better than going naked. Yeah. So I was wearing a hospital gown. I was sitting there for like uh, an hour or so. NJ went out to the railway station, closest railway station. He found out about the train. He got a ticket for me from there. And I printed, uh, you know, papers uh, mentioning the timing of the train and stuff. Like I had to change train at one station also. Right. So he got all of that. And then he was like, you know, bus is going to come at this time. Mm. You just come out there. I'll come and, uh, you know, uh, I'll arrange a cab from there. And th- this guy had to, you know, do all of that to me. And then ride back to uh, his, his place. place again. Like, you know, really, really far. He did that. And I was sitting there waiting for the bus. The bus comes in. I get into the bus. And as soon as the bus started, the security guy started shouting. He's uh. like, he saw me in the gown. So he thought, you know, some guy is running off the hospital. <laughs> he came running and he's like, where are you going? You have an hospital gown here. I'm like, you know what? I just had a fracture. Uh, there's a cycling jersey inside. It, it's all uh, cut open for the plaster. So I'm uh, I'm just going with this. <laughs> and he started laughing. And he was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> and I was, you know, literally wearing the hospital gown <laughs> and traveling the whole Belgium. Whoever saw me, saw me as a, you know, a mad guy running out of an hospital. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't show my uh, discharge summary to everybody there. Right. But everybody uh, treated me as, you know, I was a mad guy running out of an hospital. So that, was, that was really funny. Yeah. And I went out to this place. I'm sitting there. I think my phone was off that time. Mm. Um I think battery was there or something. I wasn't able to co- contact NJ. Hmm. I sat there for close to an hour or so. Nobody is there. I'm like, shit, what, what's happening? At one point, I was like, you know, from there, it, it wasn't too far. I think maybe uh, seven, eight kilometers. I thought, should I walk? <laughs> Start walking? Or Because NJ told me he's going to, you know, a cab will be there. It's been an hour and a half or so. Yeah. And then there comes a car hmm. arvin comes out from that ah. arvin is like <laughs> arvin panwar yeah arvin yeah. panwar yeah and arvin is like uh, the cab guy is not in the station he's outside so we got this that that was the so owner of the place where nj was staying right. so that guy drove me from the train station to the place where i was staying i went in and srinath saw me and he's like what happened <laughs> and i crashed he's like then after that, you know, Srinath was really helpful. He packed my bike because we were leaving the next night. Right. Uh, he had a big day. Uh, uh, I mean, the next day he went out for a race. Yeah. It was like dead. He came back in the evening. We started packing in the evening and I was trying to pack it with one hand. He's like, no, 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 you sit, you sit. I'll do everything. He packed my bike, his bike, all our stops. He was like, really, he, could, he didn't sleep in the night. Right. Uh, I remember I have a pic of him sleeping in the train. He was so exhausted that day. Yeah. And yeah, the next day we left back to Bangalore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, uh, you know, you messaging me a crash and had a fracture. And I was like, whoa, what, how are you going to come back? You are, right. you know, you have uh, your flight the next day and all that. So, but, uh, you know, the guys are amazing and took care of you and got you back, <laughs> which was great. No, that, that That's the thing, right? Uh, you know, you, you, 
even you, wherever you are when you are when you are with that bunch of people like nj yeah. arvind shri and all these you, it is a tight tight pack yeah, they really take care of each other that, that's... Yeah, i mean if i was alone there yeah. i, no I don't chance. know what to do right? <laughs> but i missed my flight for sure the yeah. next day's flight yeah. i don't know what i was doing i mean I, i can't even imagine what i would have done yeah i had no option because it's being a new place i don't know how things work right my phone is off i don't yeah. know what to do yeah. yeah that was that was like really helpful yeah but then uh, in 2018 the nationals um how was it was it before uh, belgium or after after belgium after belgium right uh, that nationals uh, you know we, i was very confident uh, mm-hmm. i mean we, we were training really well you came back from belgium you were in really good shape and leading up to nationals so also you know i again now once you were back you know you you, you got back on the trainer i guess uh, with that cast uh, you know because we didn't have much time to lose before mm-hmm. nationals didn't want to lose all the fitness that uh, you had after belgium so i remember having a few calls with uh, nj to kind of figure out uh, uh and the stuff you know what kind of things we went on and then to build on there from uh, you know to nationals you 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 were in i think very good shape uh, going into that as well so how how was that nationals for you in 2018 that was the only nationals that you came back without a medal i think True. yeah only nationals <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that nationals was again a uh, a big mess mm. uh, because i remember i wasn't able to attend my states because of my exams right me already having a medal in 2017 uh you know and i was like you know reach out to uh guys at cfi who can you know give you a entry to nationals without uh attend the state selection because yeah. we have a genuine reason you yeah. have an exam so i took out my exam timetable sent it to state associations and to cfi people and uh, yeah cfi guys were like okay we, if you have a medal we, we'll look into it we'll do something mm. uh, it'll happen so i was confident i took the flight went out to uh, delhi from there you know went to uh, haryana kurukshetra where the nationals was happening i was, I was all normal uh, a day before my nationals when i had to go collect my bibs they were like your name is not here you won't be racing I'm like are you serious <laughs> I yeah. came all all the way from there, just you know, believing in one word of yours, yeah, and you know, letting me race. And I was like, you know, I've come so far just not to race. I mean, it was really hectic. And NJ started making some calls. I was I was also uh, trying to figure out something. And then finally, I remember, uh, you know, just going out to a place where uh, everybody were there. Uh, I mean, all the. a state guys and people like that maxwell came in he was like what happened why are you here i was like you know these are the things that are happening and maxwell sir was like if at all you're okay with it you can race from our state which is telangana telangana yes yeah. So, yeah one of those telangana like, yeah he's yeah. yeah. like you can race from telangana i can give you uh, uh, the entry like okay i mean it doesn't matter which state i race from right i just yeah. want to race in nationals i've come so far yeah like okay i'm okay with it i just want a thing to race there right. bips yeah tomorrow morning is my race today till night i'm standing in the hotel uh waiting for my bips and you know cfi people are like i mean maxwell sir actually went and spoke to cfi people it was really uh, kind of him yeah uh and then after maxwell spoke to them still they weren't ready to agree yeah um and then i was just waiting there standing there like pretty much till late in the evening uh, next day is my uh, 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 race yeah i was standing there for the full time and then finally they agreed and they gave me the bib numbers i yeah. was like oh thank god i got it <laughs> and uh 
and i yeah i came back to the hotel i remember that the whole thing because we you know i was talking to your dad and you were calls like uh, and messages like it's it's not there it's there it's there not there True. it's there oh it's a lot of uh, hangama even going well into the night before yeah. a race it's not an ideal kind of preparation i would say but uh, you know yeah um, like uh, you said maxwell sir has been yeah. uh, really helpful there is an awesome guy um, so yeah going yeah, even the- uh, dattu sir hmm. he was a guy who really helped uh, with maxwell hmm. that's the only reason you know things worked out hmm. and i got my web number finally right and i went out to the hotel and unfortunately you know something happened and the arranged disc wheel wasn't available that day mm. for my itt mm. it was late in the night and yeah. i don't have a disc i'm like okay i'm i'm already uh, you know compromised on the tt bike i was using my road bike with clip ons right i can't compromise on my disc wheel at all at any cost yeah. i'm like okay i started calling people do you have a disc do you have a disc so i'm asking a lot of people then finally arvin panwar was like you know i have a spare disc you can come and take it mm. that was a quite a little far hmm. so i was like okay i have to go now there's no other option uh, so my dad was there he hmm. got a two wheeler from somebody we were like okay we'll go and get the disc wheel then ashinath was like you know you have a race tomorrow ashinath uh, did not have a race that day hmm. so ashinath was like you have a race tomorrow you rest in i'll go and get the disc wheel for you that was like really helpful ashinath uh, went out got the disc wheel from uh, uh, arvin panwar and i was at the start but i was i was pretty much confident as well uh but i don't know uh, maybe i wasn't able to you know put out that power in that new position on mm. my road bike mm. uh yeah i mean i was strong but still i wasn't on the podium and no it, it we were um, you were way uh, like what 14 seconds or something off the podium i think yeah few seconds and uh, three uh, top three were tt bikes with full oh. disc and everything and then coming uh, when i heard that you know people reached out to me like kkr and nj and all these guys saying uh, especially kkr saying dude he had it in the bag and if not for that bike mm-hmm. with that uh, clip on bars road bike with clip on bars nine 19 seconds i think he yeah, was I something like that seconds, yeah a yes. few seconds off the podium uh, you know that close with that bike is really good i you have to get him a tt bike for next time i said yeah we are working on it <laughs> but uh, that that was the, you know that was the kind of uh, thing right the main thing is putting out you know, yourself there in the situations how yeah. however hard it may be it's never straight forward each year you'll have something or the sure. other it is if it is uh, a cake walk everyone will be doing it right yes. if there is no difference sure. if, if you have to navigate and go and make sure that you are putting yourself on the start line only then you will see what you are capable of yeah. right so that's one thing that uh, you know that i see from you right and the support you have yeah, from amazing. your dad and mom right is fantastic the kind of i there are people who uh, there are uh, parents who support i have seen others as well but the to the lens that your dad goes to be there for you and uh, you know be the sonar the yeah. kind of <laughs> carrying wheels and uh, yeah, following is it? Oh, he's amazing yeah. hats off to him uh, i mean kind of... support system right in terms of support system especially my parents they yeah. are like amazing they're like you know do whatever you want we'll support you yeah yeah and uh, you know when i talk about this i remember uh day before yesterday i had a ride i was completely dead i came back home i went out in the evening i came back home i had my dinner early i slept and i woke up at around 11:30 because i was hungry i woke up at 11:30 and i'm like okay there are some fruits banana and stuff there's peanut butter i'll put that on and i'll eat 
my mom heard me uh, there and she was like what happened i was like uh, no i was little hungry i'm eating banana she is like until i am alive you don't have to do that <laughs> and she at 11:30 she woke up she made chapati <laughs> she gave it to me i had chapati and then i slept so wow. i was like Amazing. Like next level of support system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really thankful. Of that. Yes, yes. And also, the, the kind of work you put in uh, also is heartening for them to kind of go out of their way to support, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, unless you are doing well in your studies, and you know, uh, it is very easy to say. it is very hard uh, you know engineering is hard i need to study um, and i need to do this no i won't do both i will uh, take the easy route and i'll just focus on riding but then you have the maturity to say okay i am probably not olympic material <laughs> so yeah. i am i am not going to get uh, too much out of it if i don't have the education True. right you have that maturity and you have that work ethic to go out and put in the work so be it uh, your mom or dad or be it nj or me or anyone else who is supporting you only when we see that kind of uh impetus from you mm. uh, the then we can kind of go ahead and yeah. support right so that's uh, a kudos to you there as well mm. awesome awesome so coming to uh, 19 nationals right um and before going there one thing that um after you came back from nationals right um and nj and i were going in uh, uh were participating in uh, tfn, TFN yes. in that december 2018 december um that was the first time uh, i think uh, we were starting from mysore instead of from bangalore and after the flag of here uh, or the opening ceremony whatever here we uh, were traveling back Uh, we 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 had to go to uh, um mysore in buses and then start from there the next day so uh, i and uh, uh, nj were uh, got into a, a car with a good friend hari ramchandran from hyderabad so we were traveling and we were talking uh in general about cycling and everything and then the topic came to you and uh, your progression uh, over the years and um he was like uh, you know yeah he has a good potential i think we need to really look uh, into uh he, we need to focus more on him he has he made it that far with that uh, road bike and stuff uh i know he he could have done a little more but i think he's on the right track and uh, that's when i kind of you know put out to him uh you know to uh, ask nj mm-hmm. saying uh, hey i think i am i i want him to try something new mm-hmm. in terms of coaching right i i think i have uh, i have done you know with me he has done whatever he could um, maybe he would need a change uh, because i know that you are you know you are you ha- your potential is much much higher than what results you saw till there and i wanted you to kind of realize those results mm-hmm. and i had a feeling at that point of time that uh, maybe continuing in the same route might not take you to that next level mm-hmm. right because uh, at the end of the day each of us will have a set mold right of training methodology and all that and at that point of time my thought process is i think he has reached to a level where uh, he is going to plateau soon if things did not change much so i wanted that change for you yeah. and uh, i told i asked nj 
playing uh, because I know by that time he was coaching a few guys and stuff. Will you be willing to coach him? Uh, I said, yeah, man. I he had no doubt that uh, you know he he he's okay coaching you. And then I came back and um, <laughs> talked to yeah. you, uh, messaged you saying, okay, this uh, uh, talk, we talked over phone, I think. And uh, you were quite reluctant, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like, okay, should I move or not? I was a little uh, confused at that point, yes. Yeah, because I remember, I, I think... Um, uh, it was the fear of NJ, I think, more than anything. I don't know no, at that point. It wasn't exactly the fear. Uh, it was more like, you know, uh, I was already very comfortable with you. Right. Going to a new person and then again getting used to that guy and then again, you know, starting things over again. Yeah. I thought that would be tough, but... It was it was really easy. It yeah, wasn't like that. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I remember uh, uh, that conversation with you and it being you being very reluctant to kind of uh, you know make that switch. I had to convince you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is it is not because uh, you know I needed someone else who is paying me to do it, and we will look at uh, you know. Uh, at that point of time, uh, I was uh, sponsoring you in terms sure. of coaching. Uh, it's not that I need money and I want to take yeah. someone else. It is that you you have to progress from here. Mm -hmm. And that change needs to be there. And that's I had to kind of make a case for you to <laughs> go there. And uh, we found uh, a sponsor in yeah. um, Arvind to kind of, uh, you know, team, team will take care of the coaching fee with NJ. So, you you know, continue. I think it will be good. And oh, finally, you know, we managed to convince you and make that move. And I think that, uh, I think that worked out well in the sense yeah, because, you know, like, like NJ, I, I believe in the progression of the athlete first. Uh, it doesn't matter if he is under me or if he's under someone else mm -hmm. because you are family, yeah, right? Sure. Your development is important rather than, uh, you know, BB coaching, getting the name for uh, your medals. That is, that is my thought process when I proposed that to NJ and, you know, making that shift for you. And I think it kind of paid off swell yeah, uh, because, you know, it is also that mindset, right? Mm -hmm. That you get uh, also from that, you get to observe that from the coach as well, mm -hmm. right? And um, how was like 2019 uh, for you? You, 2019, you went ahead and finished second in ITT and third in road race. So two medals uh, you came back with. How was that? 2019 year? was, uh, again, uh, as usual, little, little uh, you know, I had to navigate things again. Yeah, because so, yeah, yeah, every year. That, studies, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know, backing off a little bit on my uh, studies. I was like, you know, I have to manage both of them. Both of them. And also, uh, this time it was like, you know, at any cost, I need a TT bike. Yeah, yeah. I need a TT bike and I had an option of either taking a TT bike or spending the same money to go to Belgium again in 2019. Right. I had these two options. I was like thinking over it. And thankfully, Arvin came out and, you know, sponsored the coaching fees, which really put off, you know, one thing out of my head. Yeah. Or else I'd have to, you know, think again about uh, that. Mm. And that was done. So I had two options now, either buy a TD bike or spend the same money and go to Belgium. Right. I won't be able to do both. So I got on a call with NJ. I'm like, you know, these are the two options I have now. What do you say? Yeah. He's like, you know what? Buy TD bike. Yeah. That's it. Simple. Direct thing. Buy TD bike. Yeah. And we had a little conversation after that. And I was like, okay, fine. I decided to buy TD bike. I went out to Wheel Sports. I was like, you know, uh, I spoke to Venki, mm -hmm. Wheel Sports Venki. And I was like, I need bike, a uh, good bike. I, I spoke to them for a couple of days and I ended up deciding on BMC and he was kind to like, you know, go out and get it for me and give it out for like, you know, 
a really good price and yeah i mean that's where you know things started to uh i i i felt a little confident because i had a tt bike now mm. and last time without a tt bike i was uh for just few mm. seconds away mm. from the podium mm. was, like very confident of winning my uh tt this time and uh, yeah i borrowed uh, wheels from rishab mm. uh, the tri spoke and the desk i borrowed from him i went out uh, uh for the nationals i had never used those wheels like uh before i went right. out and unfortunately i did a mistake there putting the wheel the other way around <laughs> that tri spoke yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I, because yeah i mean uh, whenever you see a tri spoke it feels like you know the sharp edge has to be in the front <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah i mean whatever you see like aeroplane the sharp the front part is sharp right. I mean, the thing that comes into our mind is sharp thing in the front yeah. but unfortunately it is the other way around yeah uh, but yeah i i never had all that in my mind while i was riding so nothing caught me up i i started i was feeling good i was feeling strong i started well i kept going going uh i had a good guy in front of me whom i had to chase down so that also gave me a really good feel i, I kept going uh and i think after i finished i was second i was li- disappointed a little bit because yeah. i was expecting to be first yeah. but unfortunately i was second so i was like i really i really disappointed a little bit but i was like okay fine um mm. uh, will come back harder next year yeah and then i went out for the road race the road race i was more like you know i just want to enjoy yeah, yeah. i'm done with tt was your uh, main, main event focus. yeah i'm done i went out to the road race i and it was raining road mm. race was like really slow road, slowest road race i've ever done with nationals <laughs> right <laughs> it was raining so everybody were like really careful, careful. yeah uh, because basically on the loops right yes. yeah yeah every u turn I'm like we either in the front or towards the end. Yeah. I don't want to crash. Right. And I remember it was so cold. I wasn't able to pick up my bottle. My hands were freezing. I literally yeah. had to slide the bottle through my legs, through my body and take it out and drink. Just because I didn't want to drop the bottle at the top. Yeah. There have been people falling over it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, till the last I never had anything in my mind. and towards the end i was like you know i was in the rare end of the peloton mm. a guy crashed right in front of me i mm. break i think last 3 kilometers mm. i somehow managed to get through this as at the end of the peloton i just i don't know at that point of time i saw a path which mm. was like a zigzag path there was a gap mm. felt like you know that ga- gap was for me yeah and there were a couple of bunch of people a small group in front of the road like i think two groups I just started sprinting to that uh snake path. I went and landed onto one group's wheel and I was like I thought they were too slow. Mm. I I never not even uh, I didn't even sit behind them. Just pulled out went to the other group. I felt they were also slow. I kept going. I was like on fire that time. I kept going to people hopped onto my wheels. I I I was like, you know, I'm not stopping. I'm not doing anything. I I just uh, put my head down, started riding. That's it. and i finished a uh, third like couple of people so yeah those two guys who sat on your yeah. wheel sprinted out yeah, yeah. and okay. then i finished third mm. i was like okay uh, i didn't get gold in tt so yeah. that's a compensation that i got in the race <laughs> yeah consolation yeah. yeah and that's the thing that came into my mind and yeah that that went pretty well mm. that was quite good awesome awesome so in 2020 um the itt didn't go as planned as oh, yeah. uh, that was uh, of the me- of the <laughs> of the matters i i think the in mumbai yeah. there are the i mean every time you are at the start line i i am actually you know crossing my fingers toes everything and you know hoping for <laughs> that but uh, this time when um, i heard um i heard from uh, one of my guys uh, uh, um uh saying uh, gagan uh, is off i said what what happened did he stop or something and so no he he gave up in between what gave up i thought uh, you know something happened you didn't stop and so no he he is not on podium but, oh, okay okay but he is fine uh, but then i realized oh 
something wrong happened because you were in really good shape yeah. you you going in and the strongest, strongest uh, yeah. that yeah. you have ever been uh, uh, and what what happened there so uh, right I'll, i'll tell you from the starting of the story yeah uh, so even for this nationals i had my exams and this was a semi exams of the 7 7 sem or 6 sem i had to you know attend and I, i just can't miss it yeah uh if i miss it then you know i'll have to retake the exam later that is only if i have uh you know 45 out of 15 internals right so i managed to you know just get 45 and i had to miss a couple of them to go for nationals because on same day of my nationals my exams were there i remember i wrote my exam my my dad took all the bike and the equipments in the car and he left to mumbai i wrote my exam same day from the college directly i went to the airport i remember one of my friend dropped me off the way to, from where i can get a uh, airport bus from there i took a airport bus uh went to airport flew down to mumbai again from there I took a cab and went to the place where they were staying so i went reached in the late night at food and slept next day you know the itd was actually usually be the first event Mm. first day itself so that was the mindset that we had so next day we whenever when, when we went out to look at the course we went out in the morning thing that you know itt is going to be in the morning the next day itself but unfortunately they changed the date to another day mm. so i was like okay the dates are changed again the training is going to be like you know have to ride uh, mm. the next day but i'm like a little skeptical should i ride should i not ride and then nj was like it's okay you can rest up because you already have a good uh, Uh, thing already there so you you can rest up one day i rested and i was feeling really strong uh, i went out to the start point they're like the itt is reduced to 30 kilometers instead mm-hmm. of 40 so i was like okay 30 kilometers i'm doing my warm up one guy comes in and says itt is 20 kilometers now and i was like 20 okay i'm i'm preparing my mindset for 20 and i'm doing my warm up and then again a guy comes in and tells 30 kilometers till i started my race i was really confused about if it is 20 or if it is 30 right and like okay 20 30 20 30 finally they told me 20 yeah. the start point it was like 20 km so okay 20 is fixed in my mind mm. and i knew how hard i could go in 20 km itt that i've done in bangalore mm. that even 33 km loop that we do on right Omar. right keeping that in mind i was like okay i can i can go hard i was just 20 km if i push it'll be done mm. I started too hard. Mm. Uh I went in I mean uh, I think it was basically five out, five back, five mm. out, five back. Mm. The first five I was flying. Yeah. Yeah. Second five I was flying. Mm. The third five I was like completely dead at yeah. one point of time. Uh I was leaving my lane and going to another lane. My eyes went blur. The heat I couldn't take the heat at all. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like forty two, forty three degrees, uh, degrees, and then it was really hot. Yeah. And the other mistake that I did was I wasn't wearing the goggles because that's how I trained here. Mm. And even the training that I did in Bangalore, I just started one o'clock in the afternoon just to mm. get used to the heat a little bit. Yeah. But this heat is completely different from what heat yeah. was in. Yeah. Very time. humid. Yeah. 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 At one point, that's what I told you. My eyes were like. blank mm. i was losing my lane i was like you know going off my lane yeah. i was about to crash into somebody else yeah. uh, i i was just off that 5 kilometers mm. and it was like crazy headwinds mm. i just managed to you know uh, do that 5 kilometers push myself and i knew i lost a lot of time in that 5 kilometers mm. and the next 5 was oh. decent not yeah. too bad mm. so that third 5 minute is where i lost like 2 minutes yeah so that i mean that i think when when i was looking at that uh, file immediately after uh, you finished i was like ah oh, that was too hard at the start <laughs> i was like the, you you messed up the golden rule you went too hard i was like uh, but you know it's so it was for 40 kilometers my mindset was set yeah. when they said 20 i was like just 20 just go hard yeah but still you yeah, can't true. you can't go <laughs> wrong with that uh, you know that golden rule you sure. can't ignore <laughs> so it's all you know more than the heat and the humidity i think you would have uh, fared much better Hmm. than that if you kind of scale down right, yes. you know scale down a little bit because 
that was i think at 10 watts too hard Mm. Ten, uh, you know average uh, yeah. you were going at 290 plus mm. for that uh, first part which was not sustainable at least not in those conditions mm. but uh, retrospect <laughs> is always there yeah. but uh, yeah lessons lessons learned for the next time i guess mm. but um, coming to road race again you were oh, uh, you did lessons. really well again uh, with a silver Road yeah. race. Uh, so when I lost my ITD, mm. I was like, you know what? I'm winning this road race. Yeah. <laughs> At any cost, I'm going out and winning this road. This was my mindset. I started. Whoever attacked, first half of the race, I was just chilling. Mm. And I tried to attack. But me being marked, whenever I went out, everybody started to chase me down. Yeah. So I came to a conclusion saying, you know, and just being a short loop, mm. it's impossible to go for a breakaway. Right. It's not happening. So I sat down in the bunch. I I was like, okay, let me wait for the final sprint. Oh my God. And this time there were so many crashes just because the feeding zone was on a downhill where we go at like 45 kph. Ah. And the water bottles that people are throwing on the road and all the guys are running on the bottles and the crashing. Yeah. That was really tough. Whenever I came to that point, I was all ready to bunny hop. I mm. think I bunny hopped around four times in the race just to miss the bottle. Jesus. Yeah. I remember second last lap. Uh, I was the end because I wanted to collect a water bottle. Mm. I went back at the end of the peloton. That's how you should do it because, you know, if you're picking up a bottle, you miss it. Everybody is going to crash. Yeah. I went towards the end of the peloton, uh, picked up the water bottle and uh, Imad was right in front of me. He crashes. Jeez. I braked so hard, my rear wheel went scrubbing. Yeah. I just missed. I was lucky to miss it. And I went out, the peloton was like gone. Mm. I chased them and I see four people in the front. All these four guys were top in ITT yeah. the previous day. So right. they had discussed about this and they went. Right. They had a good gap. I'm like, and I went out and I see my saddle nose was like this. Okay, yeah. I'm like, because of that the uh, break, crashing, the crash, yeah, my saddle yeah. nose was like this. Yeah. I'm like, shit, there's not the time to have a saddle like this. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm bouncing on the saddle to make it right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Naveen Raj was my uh, support guy on the two-wheeler. Mm. I asked him if he has an Allen key, I can yeah. you know do it on the go. Yeah. He was like, no, he doesn't have one. So I was like, leave it. Yeah. Uh, if, anyways, next is the last lap. I won't be able to do anything there. I was like, fine. I just bounced on the saddle as much as I could. But the saddle was loose. It was yeah. wobbling. Yeah. I was like, chuck all of that. I removed everything from my mind. Started chasing those guys. I, I went uh, in the front. Started to put in some work. People helped me. A couple of them. Um, and after that, you know, last lap, still they were in the front. Mm. I went out in the front, gassed out a little bit and came in the back. So... People, you know, just get a little excited because towards the end and they start to sprint. Mm. So we somehow last 500 meters to go. Uh, we caught up to them. I was like just sitting on the right wheel. But, you know, from nowhere, like four people come from the right side. And I'm like, you know, there's no place for me to sprint. I saw a little bit gap, snake gap. I always see this snake gap. <laughs> and I knew that's the only place and that's the only time I can go out. Yeah. Or the roads are blocked for me. Yeah. I had to start early. There was no other option. I was, I gave everything that I had, went out and sprinted. But one guy managed to hop onto my wheel and just out sprint. It was like inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, but yeah. Some, yeah, something to come out with. Yeah, yeah. Silver is not bad, but uh, gold definitely yeah. next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, the guy who out sprinted you, who grabbed on, latched onto your wheel, is uh, a known track sprinter, I think. Yeah, he was a yeah. track sprinter. Yeah, so. <laughs> he won the track sprint also the same year. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, you know. It'll get there. It'll yeah. get there. But um, ITT Gold, I am still hoping for uh, yes. that from you. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, this is um, this has been great, right? Uh, your journey. This is uh, not, as I said uh, before, it's not straightforward. You are. Uh, now in what you're um, doing an internship in your final sem? Yeah, so I was doing my internship. Uh, but because of my exams, I 
took off my internship and mm. also i finished my exams and stuff and i have to i mean i just got my results now i have mm. to restart i i mean internship is done mm. i then have to work with them mm. or look for something else right so yeah i'm i'm more interested in cyber security and stuff so mm. i was looking something in that domain mm. so i got uh, an opportunity in one of the companies in mm. cyber security usually uh, when i talk about cyber security domain they don't offer freshers that right, easily right so somehow they had like two rounds of in two three rounds of interview that they, they asked me some really tough questions it wasn't technical but you know more like analytical questions yeah. uh, i i managed to answer them and i was selected but unfortunately they asked me to move to chennai okay to yeah. do the work the yeah. job so i'm like if i move to chennai i i won't be able to train at the same level mm. uh, i won't have i will have to book myself have to work i'm like there's no time to train after that mm. here you know things are already at home i just have to go and eat if things are in bangalore i can train i have mm. a lot of time to do that mm. i asked them if they can you know put things in bangalore mm. they're like we'll get back to you and they've not got back yet. so i'm just <laughs> waiting like your finger crossed right okay and um also you know, studies further studies is also on something that you have on the mind right? yeah even that is there mm. but uh your yeah, colleges outside only open up uh, mm. next year mm. because i had to apply the last year itself but right. last year i never had uh, further mm. studies in my mind right uh, this year is when you know things start to flash into my head like you know i have to do i mean when i say cyber security i have to do my masters right. to get into a good job or mm. it's really really tough to navigate through all the other stuff and you know it's going to take a lot of time to move into that domain right so yeah that's when i decided to do the masters it's yeah. also on the plate yeah good but uh, you managed to kind of do whatever you can in uh, you know in cycling while studying what do you think do you think you can uh, continue to uh, do well in cycling while working yeah that, starting to work yeah that's the only reason i rejected the chennai uh, allocation right or else if cycling was not on my plate i would have just blindly gone to chennai because you know i've got a job after like you know i could say i've applied to close to 200 companies with right. cyber security domain yeah i've mailed like so many people just right. to get get into that domain like i don't mm. mind how much they pay nothing just get right. into that domain then i can navigate up right so yeah cycling is like always in in my plate yeah. uh and taking it further you know i want to do good out of nationals also mm. so keeping that in my mind whenever i thought about doing my masters i thought of doing it in europe right because if i am in europe i can simultaneously you know keep my cycling also at a higher grade hmm. so yeah now let's see how things goes but yeah things are really uh, blur right now because you don't know where you end up yeah but yeah every year it's been like this <laughs> just going you know just navigating things and just going right man it's been awesome and uh, i wish you all the very best with you. um, your job search or the ms uh, for just a reason and everything and of course cycling i am uh, again uh, saying i am waiting for that golden <laughs> itt <laughs> from you and uh, yeah again no pressure no yeah. pressure <laughs> um, and uh, because uh, you know i i still have you know some things like um, uh, as as a coach something that i notice from you uh you you do well um in the sense that you manage to get the most important work done but uh, you know there are times when you have to do more True. right so uh, that long rides or the the are those not missing those middle you know in between the drops in between True. and all that right yeah, this so year i had quite a bit of drops yeah yeah nationals. yes yes so those things uh, i hope you will manage well uh, further Uh, yeah i'm just putting it in there uh, you know i i could tell you personally also <laughs> but i want to uh, let the listeners also know that it is always not rosy True. right because 
it it is tough for everyone yeah it's it is. It, it is tough for everyone but you got to keep going right yes. you, you got to put yourself out there give your best and get things done which you have done uh, for the most part but there are the mm-hmm. you know, areas that you can uh, still improve so i wish you all the best for all that and uh, in the future journey awesome <laughs> thank you for your interest if you are enjoying this please make sure you subscribe to the channel on youtube the channel name is bikey winky b i k e y v i n k y it really helps Also please make sure you subscribe to the Working Athlete podcast on your favorite podcasting app. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music and every conceivable platform. Again, thank you for your support.